morning prayer on Wednesday the 7th of October. The Lord open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O Lord our Governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Your majesty above the heavens is praised, out of the mouths of babes and rest. You have founded a stronghold against your foes, that you might still the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have ordained, what are mortals that you should be mindful of them, mere human beings that you should seek them out? You have made them little lower than the angels, and crown them with glory and honour. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands, and put all things under their feet. All sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever moves in the paths of the sea. O Lord our Governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Psalm 77 I cry aloud to God. I cry aloud to God and he will hear me. In the day of my trouble I have sought the Lord. By night my hand is stretched out and does not tire. My soul refuses comfort. I think upon God and I groan. I ponder and my spirit faints. You will not let my eyelids close. I am so troubled that I cannot speak. I consider the days of old. I remember the years long past. I commune with my heart in the night. My spirit searches for understanding. Will the Lord cast us off forever? Will he no more show us his favour? Has his loving mercy clean gone forever? Has his promise come to an end forevermore? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he shut up his compassion and displeasure? And I said, my grief is this, that the right hand of the Most High has lost its strength. I will remember the works of the Lord and call to mind your wonders of old time. I will meditate on all your works, and ponder your mighty deeds. Your way, O God, is holy. Who is so great a God as our God? You are the God who worked wonders, and declared your power among the peoples. With a mighty arm you redeemed your people. The children of Jacob and Joseph. The waters saw you, O God. The waters saw you and were afraid. The depths also were troubled. The clouds poured out water. The skies thundered. Your arrows flashed on every side. The voice of your thunder was in the whirlwind. Your lightnings lit up the ground. The earth trembled and shook. Your way was in the sea, and your paths in the great waters. But your footsteps were not known. You led your people like sheep, by the hands of Moses and Aaron. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In the morning the Jews joined in the conspiracy and bound themselves by an oath neither to eat nor drink until they had killed Paul. 
There were more than 40 who joined this conspiracy. They went to the chief priests and elders and said, We have strictly bound ourselves by an oath to taste no food until we have killed Paul. Now then, you and the council must notify the tri tribune to bring him down to you on the pretext that you want to make a more thorough examination of his case. And we are ready to do away with him before he arrives. Now the son of Paul's sister heard about the ambush. So he went and gained entrance to the barracks and told Paul. Paul called one of the centurions and said, Take this young man to the tribune, for he has something to report to him. So he took him, brought him to the tribune and said, The prisoner Paul called me and asked me to bring this young man to you. He has something to tell you. The tribune took him by the hand, drew him aside privately and asked, What is it that you have to report to me? He answered, The Jews have agreed to to ask you to bring Paul down to the council tomorrow, as though they were going to inquire more thoroughly into his case. But do not be persuaded by them, for more than forty of their men are lying in ambush for him. They have bound themselves by an oath neither to eat nor drink until they kill him. They are ready now and waiting for your consent. The tribune dismissed the young man, ordering him, Tell no one that you have informed me of this. Then he summoned two of the centurions and said, Get ready to leave by nine o'clock tonight for Caesarea with two hundred soldiers, seventy horsemen and two hundred spearmen. Also provide mounts for Paul to ride and take him safely to Felix the governor. He wrote a letter to this effect. Claudius Lysias, to his excellency the governor Felix, greetings. This man was seized by the Jews and about to be killed by them. But when I had learned that he was a Roman citizen, I came with the guard and rescued him. Since I wanted to know the charge of, for which they accused him, I had him brought to their council. I found that he was accused concerning questions of their law, but was charged with nothing deserving death or imprisonment. When I was informed that there would be a plot against the man, I sent him to you at once ordering his accusers also to state before you what they have against him. So the soldiers, according to their instructions, took Paul and brought him during the night to Antipatris. The next day they let the horsemen go on with him, while they returned to the barracks. When they came to Caesarea and delivered the letter to the governor, they presented Paul also before him. On reading the letter, he asked which province he belonged to. And when he learned that he was from Cilicia, he said, I will give you a hearing when your accusers arrive. Then he ordered that he be kept under guard in Herod's quarters. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel, and afterwards receive me with glory. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. For I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand, and afterwards receive me with glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel, and afterwards receive me with glory. You show mercy to our ancestors, and remember your holy covenant. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. To show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. 
glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. You show mercy to our ancestors and remember your holy covenant. Let us pray. Merciful Father, we pray for your church today. For all that we do in our parishes to spread the good news of your kingdom. We pray particularly for the parish of all saints in Old Heathfield and for Torhills, who is being ordained as priest tonight. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. And we pray for this new day, for everything that we do. We pray for those meetings we should attend today, and for those who will attend the Deanery Finance Meeting this evening. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all of those involved in social services. Today we pray particularly for those social workers responsible for making sure that children are kept safe, for those that are responsible for taking children away from their birth parents, and for those who are responsible for making sure that those who are left with birth parents receive the best care and support that they can get. We pray for all children in care, for those being fostered and for those in care homes. May those who care for them do so with love and compassion in their hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all of those whose lives are falling apart due to crime either as perpetrators or victims. The perpetrators of crime, help them to steer back onto that path that you have made straight for them. May they turn away from the devil and turn towards our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. Almighty God, you have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless till they find their rest in you. Pour your love into our hearts and draw us to yourself, and so bring us at last to your heavenly city, where we shall see you face to face, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the power the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil, and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.